All right, we've got our new spark plugs, we've got our new valve springs. I wanna show y'all a way that you can be successful putting valve springs in if you have very limited experience. And it's gonna start right here with the distributor. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take a magic marker and on the base, I'm gonna go all the way around and directly below each one of our spark plug wires, I'm gonna write the number of the cylinder. So we're gonna start with number one and I'm gonna go one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two all the way around this. And what that's gonna do is, is that's gonna let us be able to take this cap off and the rotor button, as it's pointing at each one of them, we're gonna turn the engine through and that's gonna tell us which cylinder we're on where we'll know that both of our rockers are up and we can change those valve springs out. And of course we're using air. This is a required device to do this. You have got to be able to pump your cylinder up. That's what keeps your valves up and held closed. And a word of warning, right on the front end of this video, you do not leave this hooked up overnight with a valve unhooked. Because if you lose air and you drop a valve, there you are. Got to have a head come off. All right, with that, let's get this marked. So the first one we're going to do is number one right here. And I'll just start by showing y'all. And what I'm going to do is right directly where it's at, I wrote a number one right there on that base. I'm gonna do that all the way around this distributor cap. All right, we got a number. Now our cap can come off. Get that out of the way. All right, and so we're gonna rotate this engine around until we point this rotor back to number one, and then we'll know we can start with number one when we do that. So what are we gonna need to do? Get a, let's get a 5 8 wrench here. May take us a second to first get on it, but then as we're doing it, we're just gonna be moving up one eighth at a time. So it's really not hard at all. Tell me when I'm on number one. All right. There. There. All right. It ain't gotta be perfect. Cause I mean, anywhere close, that cylinder's just getting close to it. All right, so we're on number one. We're gonna start right here. All right. Let's see. Right, let's get it in here like this. And let's crack it loose. All right, there's that one. There it goes. Spin those off. Let's see. Spark plug. All right. Grab that bad boy. All right, so valve spring compressor. This is what, this is an on head valve spring compressor. Now they make really simple ones that are just a L tool that you just pull and hold. This is one that locks over um, if you've got a buddy, you can get away with just the simple pry bar style. You know, get one guy to hold it while you're doing it. Um, if you're working by yourself, you might want to go ahead and look at a rig like this. I'll, uh, I'll put a link to this on the, on the website. Let me see how it works. So, we good? All right, so let me see it. Right, here. And I'll hook you up there. And so like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it on 50 pounds. All right, so it's pumped up. I'm gonna take a rubber tip, or this is, um, this is the yellow plastic, you know, um, it's a hard plastic tip, but I'm gonna bump the edge of that um, valve around there because when you, sometimes these will get stuck. And when I, when I lock over in order to push the keepers loose, if they're stuck, it'll push the valve down with it and it'll just blow air through. And so I'm just gonna bump this edge on each one of those and make sure that my keepers are freed up, all right? So I always do that, each side. All right, so they're good. Then we're gonna turn around and we're gonna screw our lock down. There it goes, all right. So, I'm gonna screw it down. All right. All right, here we go. Okay, so I just opened it up. I'm just gonna take my magnet. I'm gonna grab my keepers with the magnet because it's easy. I can't put them back with a magnet, but I can grab them off with a magnet, all right? So there's my keepers. All right, now, I'm gonna unlock it. Turn it, grab that off there, Dylan. Now, whatever shims you've got, anything like that, don't swap anything up, do one at a time. 
All right, so top and bottom on the spring is the same. They're both ground flat, no issues there. And of course you see there's no damp or anything on this. Good looking seals there. Drop the retainer back on top. We'll turn it around. So we're gonna lock it back over like that. We're gonna take our keepers. Now, be careful here. When you're working on these ends, you've got an oil drain hole right there. Don't drop a keeper down the oil drain hole. You'll be having to go buy another keeper. And the reason that I, the reason that I keep a magnet too is because like I just dropped one of those down in there beside that valve. So I just took that magnet to get it back out. So I learned, use a magnet. And here's the way I do this where I don't lose the tip of a finger. I get them up there, all right, with my fingers. So I get them up there with my fingers and I'm holding them on that valve. And then I take a pair of needle nose pliers and I grab them. All right, I hold them with the needle nose pliers and then I let it off like that. And I still got all my fingertips. Now, once I've done that, there is a very, very specific thing that I do with every one of these. I don't wait to the end or anything like that. I do it right now. I take a rubber tip hammer and I bump that on that side. Because if I bump the side of that and that keeper for any reason, one of them wasn't in there, it's going to jump up. You know, so that's, of course, that's me popping the top of the valve when you hear that air there. But pop the side of it. I've always done it. I've never dropped a valve or had a problem. Um, so that's my routine and it has served me well. All right, so we got both of them done. Um, so we're ready to start putting everything back. So we got new auto light AR94s is what's going in the 602. That's what the engine builder that was a certified builder for this engine wanted. That's what he put in it. That's what it's been tuned to and everything. So we're going to replace it with exactly that. And you want them set to 45. Um, so I'm just going to adjust these to 45 with a round adjuster here. And then we're going to put a little bit of anti-seize on. Make sure you put anti-seize on your new spark plugs. You don't want to have problems getting this stuff out in the future because you're going to be changing these hopefully every season. Um, so a little bit there. All right, there you go, Bubba. So put spark plugs back. So we're gonna put our push rods in and, and make sure, yeah, go ahead and tighten it up. Uh, and just gonna make sure that we're on top of our lifters here. And we are, and then our rocker arms here. Now, setting the preload, um, hydraulic, hydraulic flat tap it cam. Um, I'm gonna put a quarter turn of preload in these. Now, what we're talking about is, is when I say preload, um, when the rocker arm contacts, oh, I gotta put, come on. Um, when the rocker arm contacts the top of the valve stem, all right, and you're loaded up, you're contacting the lifter and everything, that hydraulic lifter piston is at the very top, okay? And so you want that hydraulic, the, there's a piston inside of the lifter and you want it to be down some and in, the, um, in its range of movement and then let the oil manage that. There's oil pressure and the oil in there and there's a small metering hole and let that manage where it floats. Um, and I, you know, I don't like, like on a stock, totally stock engine that, you know, you're turning 3,000 RPMs at most or whatever, you just run that down like a full turn, like you're getting it into the middle of that zone. But now when you're turning, you know, 6,000 RPMs, you don't typically turn it all the way down there because what happens is, is over time, they can pump up. Now, I'm not sure exactly how bad a 602 is on doing this, um, but I know I don't want to find out. Uh, but anyway, so what I'm going to do is, is I am going to just take this and I'm going to make sure that my Allen is backed out of the middle here. All right. So make sure my Allen's backed out because I don't want to be feeling that by accident. And then get my fingers dry. I took my gloves off where I could feel this. But so like right now, this is backed off and this is loose. I can spin this with my fingers. 
and then when I get to right there, I just came in contact. In other words, that turns easy, and if these were bound up or you had a problem, you had to deal with that, because you gotta be able to, this has to be loose where you can tell. But, but right in here, it's like it snugs up. I feel the, I feel the poly nut here, I feel it snug up, and now the push rod, I can tell it's got good contact on the top and bottom. So I know that the end of that push rod is sitting down on that hydraulic lifter down. There's no slack. So right there, there's no slack. So when I say I'm gonna put a quarter turn preload in it, that means I'm gonna take this wrench, I'm gonna put this wrench on, get a good spot here. So I'm gonna put this wrench on, all right? And right there's where that was, and I'm gonna put a quarter turn of preload in it. So now I know that that quarter turn of thread has pressed that plunger on that, on that lifter down that much. And so I know I've got preload on it. And I think the rules require you to have preload. Like none of these can be loose even in the rules. Okay? So now that's done. And then I'm gonna turn around and take and spin the lock down like that. And I'm gonna hold it and lock it. All right? All right, so it's not going anywhere. So that's done. All right? Dylan, you do that one. You do that one. You do that one. You'll know it when you feel it. Because it'll just, you'll hit, a, you'll hit a spot all at once. Okay, right there. Yep, and then check your push rod too. You can tell. So you're at the spot. Right there, put a quarter turn in it. Yep, lock it down, Bubba. That's good. And that is that. Now, next up, we're gonna rotate forward and we're going, what's our next number there? Number eight? All right, so we're gonna rotate until our rotor goes to number eight and we just rinse and repeat the entire process until this rotor goes all the way around and we are done. All right, y'all, so we wrapped up right here. We've got them all laid in. Quick recap, we went through. I did want to show you, I was using a half inch breaker bar and the way that I was doing this, um, as we were rolling through, as the rotor button was on the each one of the cylinder numbers, that was before top dead center by whatever the timing set at, you know, 32, 34 degrees or whatever that is. So I was dropping a breaker bar in on the bolt on the harmonic balancer and then just resting it against the lower radiator hose. And that was just so when we aired the cylinders up, it didn't keep the cylinder from rolling back down to bottom dead center. Because if it rolled all the way back to bottom dead center, that would have been where the intake valve was finalizing closing. And we were doing them where that we were going ahead and setting are preloading everything on the cylinder, doing everything on it at one time, all right? And so that's that we were using that right there to lock in. And depending on how free the engine is and how much air pressure you use, it's gonna to wanna to roll back on you with this process unless you were to go to exactly zero on each one. But it's a good process. It's a good one for beginners to start with. Um, doing it this way, there are faster ways where I can do eight and then the other eight, but I'm having to air the cylinders up anyway um, so why not go ahead and do both at the same time? I think this is the best process to do that. This process also works for setting valve lash like on a solid cam when you're wanting to know for sure that you're on the back side of the lobes um, on the cylinders. If you roll through like this and you know as you go through on each cylinder the mark for it, then you'll know you can set the lash on both of those valves for each one of the cylinders um, if you were doing a solid cam as well. So just be aware of that. Did want to mention um, Charlie Walker just joined up with us uh, on Patreon as an all-in sponsor. Big deal. Super appreciate that, Charlie. Um, and hope to talk to him, maybe give him uh, some information or some tips and stuff to help him with his racing. And he has a channel. I'm going to put a link to it at the end of this one. Y'all check him out because Charlie jumped in in a big way as a sponsor for us. So we greatly appreciate that. So he's got a lot of good stuff. He's out there. Got some fun videos with the Ford Ranger that's awesome. So uh, give it a look. I appreciate it. What else, Dylan? Uh, the preload on the valve springs. Oh, preload. Um, so... 
Mr. Robert Hughes is the builder of this 602. He's a certified engine builder, and he had told us to set the spark plus to 45 thousandths, which we did. We're going exactly by his numbers. And I normally had done a quarter, in, uh, a quarter turn of preload on the hydraulic lifters, um, but I'm running racing engines, you know, not 602s. 602s haven't been my foray. I'm getting into them more. Mr. Robert said, hey, I want a half a turn to three quarters of a turn on the 602 for preload. So we took all of these up to a half a turn of preload and everything. Um, so, because if you've got one of these 602s or 604 and you've got a certified builder, you know, however they're tuning it, however they're dyno it and everything, they are the experts. So I'm strictly going by that, you know, guidance on that to get the best out of this particular engine. And everything and i hope it's a good one and dylan wins more races this year appreciate it see y'all next time we got brake lines to put on our street stop